one more year. Give me just a little more time. Give me just a little more time, God. I almost got Jesus. Give me a little more time, God. I almost got Pedro where I want. Give me a little more time, Father. I'm working on Jose out there in the Middle East. Give me a little more time. Give me a little more time, Father. I know there's not much fruit, but, 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 but I think... I, I think they're getting ready to squeeze out a fig here. God, I, I, I think I can do it. And then look what, look what the interceder does. Look what Jesus does. He says, please. He, uh, he said, please give me more grace. Give me a little more time. And, and then the second point, he promises more work. He says in verse 8, leave it alone for one more year and I'll dig around it and fertilize it. Did you see what just happened? Well, the the tree we've we've admitted we're the we're the one screwed up ain't we the master's got an honorable complaint i've been coming for three years and you don't change cut it down why should i even have you choke off all the good ones and the master says give me one more year and look what he does in in what i can only explain is that jesus blames himself lana he says, Father, give me one more year. And then he says, and I promise you, I'll do a better job this time. Can you, is anybody hearing what I'm saying? Jesus seems to blame himself for our failure. Are you following me this morning? It's as if Jesus, it's as if the gardener, listen, who's going to plead for us? The one that we rejected, the one that delivered, the one that saved, the one that filled us, the one that baptized, the one that anointed, the one that called. He himself comes up and says, maybe it was me, master. Maybe I didn't dig right. Maybe I didn't work enough. Maybe I got to fertilize them more. I'll take the blame. Is anybody convicted yet? When the one we rejected takes the blame for our failure. We should be humbled. We should be humbled. That Jesus would even throw his name in the hat and say, maybe, maybe I, I, I'll work harder. Please, Father, don't, don't cut him yet. Don't let the acts of your judgment cut him down. Maybe uh, I'll... I'll, I'll Maybe I didn't dig deep enough. Maybe I was too merciful and, 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 uh, and maybe I'll dig deeper and I'll get some fertilizer in there. Maybe I, I promise I'll work harder if you just give me a year. Give me one more season with them. Church, you better wake up and realize you're in your last season right now. Somebody, somebody say amen if you understand. You're in your last season right now. And the acts of the master has got to come in judgment. He gives blessing, but he also gives judgment. He says, I'm about to cut you down. And yet, the very one that you rejected, the very one that came to save you, he stands once again. Not only did he do it on the cross when you rejected and stuck him with the Spirit, he said, Father, forgive them. Not only that day, but right now, he said, give me, give me one more year. Maybe I did it wrong. I'll do a better job, Father. I'll do a better job, God. I'm going to dig around him. I'm going to dig around him. Listen to this. I'm going to dig around him. Some of you today, I need you to let me tell you a story. Listen. Well, you look, me, look me, I don't care, it's just 150 hours right, right at my eyes for a minute. Over the weekend, I have a little pond. This is very serious. Just a small little pond. I just some little thing I built in my backyard. I put some fish in there. And I got a couple of lily pads, and these flowers come up. They're beautiful. Very powerful story. True. Just happened this weekend. So I got these little lily pads, and I realized that the flowers aren't coming out all this month. I thought, man, that was so cool how they'd come out. I'd call Debbie every day, and look at the flowers, you know. But they're not happening. I read my book and it said, it's probably that they're overgrown and some of them are choking the others. And the nutrients can't get to them. So I get this plank and I reach in and I pull out these giant lilies. And they've got like just dirt all over me and 
big old plants are hanging over my shoulder and I take them over to a concrete slab on my little deck I have and I begin to hit them on the ground and I begin to soak them like that. Now in the book it says let them lay in the sun someplace. Let the sun beep, beat on them because it'll get all the bugs out. It'll make the bugs leave if they're not comfortable. And I hit it with more until I had nothing but roots and I was shaking them. My neighbor came by and said, hey Jim, are you tearing your pond up now? Did it fail? I said, I said no. I said I'm just cleaning up some roots so that they'll grow nice again finally I had the other ones and I had my whole pond emptied and all my sidewalk was full of these plants and the sun is beating down and my other neighbor says hey isn't that going to kill them I said they'll be all right. I'm not going to leave them there long just long enough to clean them up and some of you today maybe God has been yanking you out and you feel like why is God doing this to me I don't know why I'm suffering why is my marriage falling apart what's going on with my job and why are my finances bad why do I feel like God is not even near me and God has said because I pulled you out and I'm shaking you up he said, because I promised my father, my father's coming to whack you. He's got to judge. He's the holy God. And when he comes, so I begged for you. I said, give me one more year. I promise I'll dig around them. And God is probably crying to his father, saying, please give me another day. And he's crying to you, saying, I'm sorry I got to hurt you, but you got to get this out of your life. I can't have you choking each other up. I need you to be anointed. I need you to bear fruit. The Father, the Father has got to do what He's got to do. He says it's all going to be righteous, but maybe if I could dig around a little bit. So when you're feeling lonely, I think He's just digging around a little bit. Then, Jesus, after He asked for more time, he promises more work. He does the most amazing thing in verse 9. Could you put that up in the King James for me, please? Jesus does the most amazing thing. Listen to me. He promises that this will be his final effort. Are you listening to me? The final thing he does, watch, I'm going to show it to you. Are you ready? Are you ready? Listen to me. Calm her down just, just a teeny bit while I'm talking. That's all right, honey. That's all right. That's all right. The final thing Jesus does, he says, God, give me a little more time. And you and I ought to be ashamed. He says, maybe, maybe it was my fault. Maybe I didn't really convince them on the resurrection. Maybe I didn't dig around. Maybe I didn't get to the root of their problems. Maybe I didn't. I'll, I'll do that. And so he's really shaking us. I was saying, man, my life was never this bad as a Christian. I remember in the 70s and 80s, I was just singing, you know, blood all over the world. You know what I mean? I'm singing and having a good time. Amazing grace. You know what I mean? It was, life was so easy. And you're wondering, why are things getting tough? Why are things getting harder? Man, I've been in the game for 15, 20 years. Why? Why does it seem like it's getting more intense? And God is saying, I got to shake you up. I got to, the master's coming. And, master, and what you thought was fruit was not fruit at all. But I got to get something out of you. I got to get away from all that sin out of you. I need you to bear fruit. And listen to me. When you feel Jesus shaking, when you feel these things coming in your life, a disease or an affliction, an addiction, something, let me tell you something. Don't be looking for the big thing. Listen for the still small voice that says, it's for you. I love you. It's for you. Come on. I know you feel like you're baking in the sun. I know you feel like you're separated it's for a reason. I need some fruit or you're going to have less privilege. Jesus is whispering in you, I need fruit. Come on. And he says here, this is the final effort. Look what he tells the master. Give me some more time. I'll work harder. All right, I'll dig around. Then he says, and if they bear fruit, it's all good. But if not, after that, you can cut them down. How many of you, you dance into this world, well, this is a good alternative lifestyle. I don't have to be gay. I can be a Christian. You know, I don't have to be an addict. I can be a believer. And this is just kind of a cool alternative lifestyle. How many of you realize that we're in the after that? The, those three years was when Jesus was on the earth 
this is 2,000 years of the after that. I don't know about you, but I don't think I want another year passing by before my stuff is right. He says, after that, God has been shaking our church. Services are too long. This is too much. I don't know. The nursery isn't as pretty as I want it to be. Really? Get, build a bridge and get over it. Help us out then. Become a teacher. Come help us out. I need some men and women to be teachers. Matter of fact, I'll tell you right now, I need a good choir. I want you to come up and see me after service. I want to get your name down. And some of y'all can't sing if I put a tune in a bucket so you ain't going to be in it. And that's it. And it's not that I don't love you. I'll find something else for you to do. But I'm not going to have you on my choir just because you're my buddy or my homeboy or my homegirl. It's just not going to happen. I need a dynamic, powerful choir. But then I need you to get here on time and worship with them. And after that, he's going to cut us down. How many of you right now think, I've been shaking, trembling, I've been blaming it on God, blaming it on my neighbor, blaming it on my wife, blaming it on my kids, blaming it on my girlfriend, blaming it on my job, blaming it on my money, my finance. I'm blaming it on, you know what, it's because I'm black. You know what, it's because I'm Hispanic, I'm Puerto Rican, and that's why they don't like me. They profile me and everything. It's always everybody else's problem, right? right? Uh, when did you think that maybe you're the tree that should be bearing fruit, and God will honor those that honor him? And if we seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, then maybe he will lift us up and we won't have to deal with all the racism and prejudice of this world because he will lift us up himself. Are you with me? Well, this morning, I want to read something I wrote to you to close. I hope you understood the... the importance of my message is not that you liked how I preached Nyeh. forget that the importance of my message is did you get it did you get it you and I are living in the after that if they don't bear fruit cut them down father give me a little more time I'll dig around them after that do what you got to do, Lord. You are a holy God and must judge with, with, uh, with equity. Many of us here today are at the after that point in our lives. And God has placed us in a place of privilege, a place that gives us our messages, our sermons, our worship, our praise. He's extended grace and even more grace upon us, even after that, given us more abundant grace. He's interceded on our behalf. He sent his son. And has begun digging at the root of our problems. I wrote this last night. He's begun digging at the root of our problems. And many of us feel like we're being removed from God. When we end up in jail, prison, this, that, whatever. We feel like God has abandoned me. He said, no, I'm not just shaking your roots. Got to get you away because you're going to choke the others. You got me? And this should be a warning to us. that God is trying to get fruit. It should whisper to us, time to bear fruit. God has called me to be a fig tree. If he's digging around, if the Holy Spirit is digging in your life today, just take two or three minutes and come and lay your roots at the altar. If you've been having trouble in your family with your life, with your wife, with your children, man, come on down and lay them down, man. Just say, God, there's some stuff in me, some there's some anger, some hurt, some pain, some resentment, some violence, some, some all this nasty stuff in me. I, and I just need you to clean me up, Lord. And listen to me. And you separated yourself right now, didn't you? There is the, listen to me, there's the garden and you're separating yourself saying, I, I, I need to be alone with God, man. I just need to get my roots cleaned up. I need to make sure that I'm squared away with God. Thank you for your obedience. Thank you so much. I love you so much for your obedience. Never let me go I lay it all down again Come to me Right now, church, I want you to look at me for a second. 
right now at this very second, including me, we're all planted right now, right here, at a place of privilege again. Once again, he's saying, you're right here. You're planted right in my garden. He says, yeah, you're protected. Look at the walls, the Spirit of God, Jesus Christ, Lord, Savior, the blood of Christ, all the other believers. We're protected. We're in a place of fruit. Why is it that we're always so social but never intimate? Why is it they're always trying to be the life of the party but never bringing life to the party? You follow me? So you're in a place of privilege again. Don't waste this time. Take this time and say, Lord, there needs to be some shaking going on in my life. I'm tired of blaming all this shaking up on everybody else. I know it's you. Because after that, because after that, after that, only the Father and Jesus know. Amen. Let's just pray for a few minutes. day some of you need to go home and you need to yank some stuff out man, and get some stuff right in your life and maybe that's something that you can't do here but 
you need to know that God has called you to be a gardener too. Some of you are a gardener in your home. And you need to go home today and you need to yank some stuff out and wash it up and clean it up and maybe do what God does. He lays us bare. Maybe we need to go home to our families and uh, maybe a wife, a husband, a mother, a sister, a brother, a friend, son, a daughter, and just lay yourself bare and just say, you know what? I've been judging you wrongly and I've been casting all this, all these leaves over you, making you think I'm all that, but there's been no fruit and I'm changing. And just really admit it. I, I really believe that's what Jesus wants from us. The fruit of a fig tree is a fig. And the fruit of a Christian is Christ. Let them see Jesus in you. Father, I thank you for this day. I ask if Debbie will play a little bit. If you want to stay, certainly stay. But if you've got to leave, then we want to honor that as well. Maybe we have a lunch arrangement or something. Father, we thank you, Lord. We pray your blessing upon this wonderful day, Lord. We give you grace, praise, honor, and glory. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Have a great, great, wonderful day. If you want to stay and pray a little bit, that's fine. We'll play some music and uh, some worship and we'll pray with you and if you're at the teachers meeting the, the teachers meeting starts in a few moments a few minutes